Hi, we are back for more knowledge sharing. This time I'm very happy to present two friends from the French Riviera that always present together and always are linked to each other in life and in their professional daily life. Hélène and Didier Crescenzo. It is great as it is the first presentation of this Congress dedicated and oriented for the lab technicians and shared by lab technicians. Hélène and Didier Crescenzo are both dental technicians and in 2004 they joined to develop the laboratory Esthétique Oral in Saint-Tropez, specialized in dental aesthetics. They have been authoring numerous international conferences and clinical and laboratory publications and are both in charge of the section of laboratory of the magazine Biomaterial Clinique in France and other magazines. They mostly work by distance without seeing the patients. They are for six years the designers and the trainers of a system of aesthetic digitized which needs no investment, the VEP, Virtual Aesthetic Project. Their understanding of our two professionals placed them unmistakably at the top of the art. They follow the technological evolutions closely, but without guard first and foremost the values of their job on the quality. They are members of the Bioteam Paris. Hélène and Didier will be presenting knowledges to be shared between our two professionals. Virtual Aesthetic Project which is one subject that gets us back to the basic and artistic form of doing dentistry. This is a presentation you shouldn't miss. Hi. Hello, everybody. Very, Hello, everybody. We are very honored to be part of this International Aesthetic Masters. Um, we hope we will share with you knowledge that we should have to increase our uh, daily teamwork with uh, between the lab and the clinic. Um, I'm going to be the one who's going to speak because uh, hopefully for you, DJ is not going to speak English. But the whole lecture is done by us too, and the work is mostly done by DJ also on those cases. So um, let me introduce to you this uh, this lecture. First of all, we would like to thank Dr. Joa Borch and Dr. Rio Pereira da Costa. They just did an incredible uh, challenge to uh, share to the whole world. Um, education and different uh, lecture and different type of lecture with dentists, uh, the dental technologists. So really thank you for the big work you did and you're still doing because I think you have uh, more work after when we share with you our lectures. So here is our lab. It's in the Gulf of Saint-Tropez. We are here since, uh, I am here since 1999 and uh, we, we became partners uh, uh, in our work and private life also. Uh, in 2005 we moved on in this place. So we are right near Saint-Tropez. You can see Saint-Tropez on the picture. So this is where we work. We are a team of six person. Uh, we would like to thank them like for each lecture because all the work you see, of course, they worked on it at one moment and they, they share with us our daily work and good and bad moments, but 
it's really great to work together. So let me introduce to you our lab. It's a, a small lab. Here it is. <laughs> So here it is. It's a simple lab. We do real cases. We don't do uh, cases for lectures. Of course, when it's great, we want it. We can share it, but uh, it's not a lecture of wow effect. It's really about real case. So we are dental technicians. We had the opportunity to to do paper with with dentists in Niger lab line, different lab lines. So. Here are our cases that are showed how we did the case with dentists. We published a lot of uh, papers also on uh, different ingots because we work a lot with uh, Emacs Press, but we do a lot of desilicate in our lab. So uh, one paper in each uh, ingot on aesthetic cases. Uh, there's a new paper in French it's BMC about um, biomaterial. It's uh, Jean-Pierre Attal, who's the director. And we are, um, <clears throat> we are managing the lab part for the dental technician, so we can share with the dentist how we do, how we do each, how we work with each material. So um, for now, we did two of them. And we also made paper about uh, 
some uh, technique that we do in our lab, so uh, the CPC technique to press thin, the, the three techniques we use in the lab to do veneers, and also cases on PFM with uh, ceramic. So those ones are translated in lots of language. Soon we will have the, the book of Jean-François Lasserre, which is called uh, Fusion. It's going to be about ceramic. And the, we are, I think, 10 authors. And we have two chapters on different subjects. One will be on the texture and the other one on the desilicate. So we hope to read this book very soon. And before we start this lecture, we would like to thank our master, who is Gérard Lubassi. He's a French master. He learned a lot to us, but not only to do cases. He learned us how to uh, think about cases and how we can go farther each time when we have um, a difficult case to do. So we would like to thank him for all he did. So today, the subject will be about the Virtual Aesthetic uh, Project. It's a paper we wrote in December 2014, and uh, it has been also published in 2015. This, is, um, this was done in the lab because, uh, as you saw, we work in the Gulf of Saint-Tropez, but we don't work with dentists in the Gulf of Saint-Tropez, or at least sometimes, but most of our work is done by distance, so we never see the patient, and we we needed to to get a protocol to share with the dentists. So another paper about the VIP. This one was made with uh, Dr. Michel Becker. He's in Paris, and he he asked us to do this paper because he came to our course about the VIP, and he learned. He's a very good photographer, and he wanted to share how he he can do his picture nicer and how we study it by distance. So we would like to thank him. So now we're going to start about talking about the VIP. So first of all, it's uh, the communication. So here is the way uh, the patient looks in France in a lab. We have models, we have numbers and letters because we're supposed not to be allowed to have the, the name of the patient. So this is the patient, but we realize that uh, most of the time we miss of communication with the, with the clinic because we like the senses. The obvious fact paralyzes the demonstrations, uh, demonstration because um, uh, most of the time the dentist, when they see the patient, we are all professionals, so we see immediately what's wrong in the smile, but we don't have this opportunity though. So sometimes we miss some information. So the story started in 2011 with this case, with, the, um, with a case of Dr. Gilles Thierlet in Paris. This was the case before and after, and it was a very difficult case because the, there was a gummy smile and the, the, the aesthetic curve was not good. The oxygen was not good, but we had to give a new smile for this, to this patient uh, without seeing her. So the story of the Virtual Aesthetic Project started at that time on this case. And uh, it's with lots of mistakes that we learn from, uh, with the time. So we know that we have the middle line, which is very important. But where is the middle line? There, there's the inescapable marks, sorry, that we can transfer on the model. But in the lab, we can hold the model in several um, ways. So that's what happens in the lab. We know that there is, there's the middle line, but how do we hold our model? And then there's the face, there's the lips. So we, know, we need to know where are the, the teeth, the neck, the, the incisal edge in this uh, phase to study the case. So we need lots of information and it's not that easy, easy to share them. As you can see, here's the, the, the patient, which is pretty woman, everything's right, so, so everything's good, but it's not always the case as you will see on different cases. 
So as you can see here, the model, if we move the model, if we don't hold it correctly on the face, of course, it changes the, the plan. So, the in inevitable uh, the lips contour, the axis of the faces and the eyes, but sometimes it's not that easy. Sometimes we have patient, their smile are not uh, that symmetric, so we have to study the case. As a mason, we need to, to know exactly, we need repairs to know where we will uh, put the, the ceramic tiles. Our teeth are, are like ceramic tiles. We need to know where we have to put them. So here's a try-in so we can check with our VIP if we are right with the plans, the different plans. So this case was treat uh, for orthodontist uh, Christine Muller in Paris. So here's the final case. As you can see, the lower arch is much more um, straight and then we did the veneers on the upper arch. So I'm very sorry about that, but in France we're now allowed to show the, the face of the patient on social uh, network. So that's why we hide all the eyes of all the, the patient. It's not easy to talk about aesthetic. <laughs> project with the, the eyes um, hide but, but it's a rule so we respect it. So here is the case uh, at the beginning follow the lines and you will see that we we try to make it a little straight straighter. So this is the patient before and after. So how can we analyze or create a digital uh, project? So there is different options. In the surgery, as uh, Galip Burel, you can do a, a direct layer and uh, see with the patient if everything's fine and then take just a print to send it to the lab so we can uh, use always this bottle as a reference. There is also uh, the way to send to the lab prints and the face bow that we put on articulator and then we do a wax up. And there is the third uh, technique, uh, CAD CAM, which is uh, really getting better and better with the scanning the print and we can design it on computer uh, and think about the, the, the future smile. But this is, this today what we're going to talk about is when you didn't buy anything and you just need a computer and a camera. <clears throat> so when we don't use uh, new tools and when we don't get uh, apps, we realize that we are, um, we have to learn knowledge and then it's, we, we feel better to go get some new tools because we know really what we want and what we need. So this uh, system of virtual aesthetic project is a protocol that uh, we share with the dentists so they understand what we really need because it was done in a lab by dental technicians that <laughs> doesn't see the patient. So that's why we, we think it's like it's basic. So the dentist takes pictures, they send it to us by a computer and then we can do the study or they do it by themselves. It's a, it's a way to work. Uh, it, this way is used by lots of leaders in the world. There's many other techniques to do uh, um, um, aesthetic project like GSD, CDS, and Photoshop. There's lots of techniques. This is not a problem. It uh, doesn't matter which technique you use. For, <clears throat> for the virtual aesthetic project, we use Kina. It's much easier for us to use Keynote than PowerPoint. PowerPoint is a little more difficult at the end of the project. We have less options. So now I'm going to share with you how we try, how we 
try and how we do the virtual aesthetic project. So first, uh, we have to understand that this uh, it's like a GPS. We have the, uh, the principal roads, which are the lines that we said be be before. And after, you have the, the little roads that you, we should use to get to the final goal. So it's like a GPS for your dental technician. And that's why we found it very important to share this with you. So you could share it with your dental technician. And also you can share it with, um, with uh, other professionals because it's a multidisciplinary study. So with um, implantologists, uh, orthodontists, dental technicians, and parodontologists, if it's in French, in English. So for this case, this is a case of Michel Becker. Uh, this patient wanted a new smile, but before we study the whole case, we just tried to get, get him a new smile, only a smile with no occlusion, no fun function, only a smile. So we did the virtual aesthetic project. We made a virtual project. Uh, this is the, the second picture. And we realized a wax up. So the dentist made the mock-up, as you can see on the picture, but of course this patient has no function. It's only to see what this patient would like to have as a, as a new smile. So when he had this mock-up in his mouth, he was so happy, to, so he wanted, to, he wanted the dentist to study the whole case, but when, we still didn't do the case because we have to first... Um, uh, this patient has to go see an orthodontist and then there will be implant and then we will study the whole case. So it's going to take time, but that's the, that's the goal he wants. He wants this smile. This is another case done in the Gulf of Saint-Tropez, a patient that wanted uh, a full study. He, he, didn't, he, want, he wanted the dentist to take his uh, case as a, a, a full case, so we studied by a project and then we waxed. It was a very difficult case because there was veneers, there was PFM, there was implant. So we had to match all those materials, but the result is correct. And this patient was very happy because we studied, we took the whole case. We made the whole case. Another case of Gilles Thierlet in Paris. So this patient uh, lost, lost of um, enamel. So we made a project and then uh, uh, wax up, mock up. And on this case, well, we just did some overlays, but not that much to increase the video. And then we did palatal veneers on the, on the anteriors, upper anteriors. And uh, Gilles Thierlet did uh, the matching on the front, uh, front view. So there is no uh, front uh, veneers. There is only palatal veneers in composite. Here is a case of uh, Michel Becker in Paris. So this patient, uh, uh, she, we studied the case also, and then she went to the orthodontist, and she had also implants, and then we finished by veneers. So first of all, we always treat the posteriors, and then we do the, the, the anteriors. This case was very long to, to do, to do it, uh, about two years. Um, you also can do the dynamic study just to show to your dentist because honestly the dental technician doesn't need it, doesn't need this. So you can share this with your 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 patient if they just want to know how to smile. It's very easy to do it. It's just two pictures. So it's a little funny to share this with the patient. So. To understand what, what we need, the most important for the lab is the photography. So we're going to talk about photography, not about the colors, because this is not the, this is not the subject, but we're going to talk about the plants. Communication by, the, by photography is very important. There's lots of benefits to communicate with the patient, to communicate with the technician, for interest legal, legal medica, medical, helps to the diagnostic, aesthetic, analyze, communication with the scientific community, education value. That's why we can share with you today because we have lots of 
pictures to share with you and we thanks each day the dentist that shares with us. So there's the tool, you need a camera and different flash. So there's the, the R1, uh, C1 or the, the meds, there's bouncers and there's different results of course, depends what flash you're going to use. You can do also a studio to take pictures of your patients. And this is what we receive each day in our lab. So you could see that we have different, um, different position of the, of the patients. And it's, of course, it's very difficult for us to, 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 to study a smile if the patient doesn't have the right position. So which posture to adopt, which centering, on which reference can we lean, we need a streamline. So that's why we're going to talk about the plans, which is the most important to do a virtual aesthetic project. Uh, even, a, uh, even a digital project doesn't care about which one, but this is the study about the virtual aesthetic project that we published, the plans are published, and now uh, that's what we asked to the dentist to take. Uh, we need those pictures to study the case. So we have uh, different priorities than what we can hear usually. Uh, you're going to see that for us the first uh, priority is the posture of the head. It's not the axis. It's really the posture of the head. So we have three of them. There's the transversal, sagittal and the vertical. So this one for us is the most important because as you can see on this small video, if the patient is not on the good uh, position, you cannot correct it with the software. No software can, can correct it. So this is the position as, um, as a yes, like they move the head to say yes. This one is very, very, very important for us. We need to have the, the right position of the patient to study the smile. Because there's different plans. There's the Frankfurt plan, Camper plan, and occlusion plan. So as you could see, the position of the lady actually, she's on she's on the, the there's the occlusion plan, but her nose is right there on the ear. Um, if she just put her head down, then we will have the correct plan, the occlusion plan. plan. So this will be the, the, um, the plan that we need on our articulator. So when we watch our articulator, we can see the same position on the picture. Look at Didier, he made a small video just to show this posture of the head, which is the most important for us. So here's the plan of Frankfurt, and here's the cur his aesthetic curve. As you can see, he's not on a good position on the left picture, but on the right picture, he's on a good position. You can see the nose with the ear that match, and then the curve is more the cur curve is better for the smile. It's not a line because we don't have line in our smile. So why do we want this? As I said before, it's because of the articulator. We want to see the patients on the picture as they would be on the articulator. So when we work and we, we wax, because usually when we layer, we already did the wax, so we have keys but when we wax the case, when we study the case, we need to see the same position on the articulator than on the pictures. Because we don't have any lips on the, on the articulator. So now we're going to talk about the vertical uh, position. This one is very important also. It's like if you say no. This one we cannot correct it also on the computer. There's no, no um, software that can do it. So it's very important to be that the patient has to be straight. You have to see uh, exactly the same part of his left face and right face. Try to be really in, on the middle so we can see exactly the, the same thing. And then, then there's the sagittal position, as you can see. 
This one is usually the one we hear about the most, but it's for us less important because you can correct it with your computer. This is very easy to correct with your, doesn't matter about the software, it's very easy to correct it. So this one at least is on the third position because we think that is it is less important. So let's do a recall of all what we need. So first, first of all, we need the posture of the head. So you can watch DJ at the same time. So here's the posture of the head. Then there's the front plane, the reference axis. So when you watch on in your camera, that's what you're seeing. Here's the occlusion plan. The front plane, so we have to see both part of the of the face as, exactly the same and the third one is the referent axis so that's it you if the patient has the, the head too much on the on the back then you ask him to just put it down a little bit so you will have the good position and you will have the good aesthetic curve of the smile this is very important for your lab thanks dj for sharing with, sharing with us this nice video Okay, so a demonstration of shooting in, in, your, in your office when you take picture because um, we work by distance so we don't see the patient. Most of the pictures that you will see are done in the clinic by the dentist. So here are the clinical um, photography, the four faces of the smile of Abu Kaya. There's the attitude. The middle to smile, the middle to laugh or to smile, spontaneous, and the smile dent lab, labial or to smile put. So, and there's the retractor. So for this example, this patient came in our lab and we did the, the different uh, um, faces of the smile. So this is the first one, he doesn't smile. This is the middle one between the first and the second. He smiles a little bit. This is the second phase, so he smiles. We can see his smile. We can see that his um, edges are not in place, so we will have to work on it. This is the third position. He smiles the more, more he can. He doesn't smile that much. So we put extractors to help to see where, uh, are, the, where are the neck. And then there is also uh, the intrabuca pictures. So it's exactly the same for the intrabuccal pictures. If they are not in a good plan, you can understand that for the lab, it's, it will be difficult to design a good, uh, a, a right curve, because the um, those pictures need to be exactly on the same position than the the, the face that we said just before. So here are three different ways that we can receive pictures. And this is the, a real difficulty for us in the lab if we don't have the, the, good, the good one. There's another uh, view that you could do. This is more for orthodontists if we need to move uh, teeth because uh, sometimes there's cases that we don't uh, study um, too fast. We prefer that the, the patient see the um, the orthodontist to move teeth before we share with orthodontists uh, our VIP so they can we can um, we can see exactly uh, the, the what we need to move on which teeth so tooth sorry so it's interesting also for them that's why we like also doing this we share with them also 
So different option. This is the lab option. We can take um, the pictures of the models and you will see why. So we can take them on different positions. So I'm going to share with you the, the protocol of the VIP. This is what we send to the dentist who wants to work with us. We ask them to take those pictures and uh, we take the pictures of the models if we need to put the models uh, in the smile that I will show it to you right after. So here's the demonstrations. So th this is a patient of Gilles Thialet in Paris. He sent to us those pictures. He sent to, to us uh, this case. It was an erosion case. So here, here are those uh, models. Those models were done to do uh, something else. That's why there's a uh, um, PFM to do, but we, we studied on this case, on those uh, bottles, sorry. So here are the pictures that we received and we wanted to to study the, the, the case, but um, the, the clinic uh, picture was not on the good plan, so we did pictures of the model. And then we fixed the model in the smile this is very easy to do and then you can zoom the smile. It's better to take a picture of the face and you zoom the smile because you're sure that the patient, that your, your smile is on the right position. So then you can measure different, uh, the, the initial uh, length of the teeth. So after you, you can use, uh, you can design the new smile and this will help the dental technicians to know exactly what they will need to, to add on the neck or on the incisal edge. Um, this is very important. Dental technicians cannot uh, wax with just proportions. We need to have measures and, measure, uh, and precise measures. So this is what we use in our lab that we put on in front of us when we wax a case. We print this, uh, this screen and we work with this in front of us to wax the case. So this is the new design. We, we wax on the gum, on the plaster gum uh, for the gingivectomy. So we measure them and then we do the, the wax. So this picture is the final um, design that we will do. You have to understand the, so this is not really the one you will show to the patient. This one is for your dental technician because uh, the, the, for the patient they like to have a nice design of teeth when you do a design but for us we just need measures. So there's different uh, aesthetic project. Huh? There's the one for the dental technician and the one for the patient if you want to share it with him. So this is the design before, after, well, the, the initial case and the, the virtual uh, aesthetic uh, project. So after the VIP, what's happening? I'm going to share with you what, what's happening in the lab because we did the, this case, we studied it, and then we needed to wax it. So in our lab, we get the, the, the models, we print the, the, the project.
because those keys has to have to be comfortable for the patient so don't do them too big and it's good to uh, to design exactly the teeth that needs acrylic on this first key so as i said before the first molar the two premolars and the canine as you can see he's he's designed it the key uh, exactly on those teeth. So this is the first keys, the upper one and the lower one. It's showing the middle so it's easier for the dentist to, to fix it right. And now he's waxing the incisives, the lower ones. According to the VIP, of course, on this case we didn't need to do palatal veneers. It's, uh, three-step erosion, uh, erosion and wear, but uh, on this one we didn't need to cut out the knees. So it's a two-step. So he's reaching the occlusion with the lower wax. Thank <laughs> you. 
this was done just behind me in the lab. You could see the lab behind me. <laughs> so this is what we sent to the dentist, the wax up upper and lower wax up with the four keys. So here are the models that we send with the different steps and the keys. Gilles Tirelet did a paper on this case for the full mock-up and he describes exactly the steps of the clinic part of the full mock-up, but there's also our part of the, the WhatsApp. It's on BMC. Then we use this technique of CPC. It's a ceramic gel from Aman Girba to do the frames are of our um, overlays or veneers. Um, it's, we found it better than wax because it doesn't uh, move. It's more, we found it more sure, so we like working. And you can use this gel, um, it's photo, and you can wax on the gel. So here is what we press, very thin pieces. You can see the veneer lays on this case, on this uh, picture, on this slide. And on this case, we had to do two crowns with margins. So you can see that it's very, very, very thin, but it's going to be bounded on enamel, though, so it doesn't really matter. So the acids on this silicate, it's, it's 20 seconds. And then here are the clinical view of Gilles Tirelet. As you can see, the occlusion is not that, uh, uh, the, the cups are not that big because uh, it's an erosion case, so we, it has to be comfortable for the patient. And now the, the, the veneer, so this is the key of the wax up, so of the mock-up also. Uh, Gilles did the preparations. He didn't prepare that much, but we increased the, 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 the video and the length was um, much more uh, important. So we, it looks like he prepared a lot, but he didn't prepare a lot. It's the wax up, which is longer. So this is really minimal uh, invasive cases. So the different cases you can see on the upper right, it's the, the, the frame that the secret the silicate frame and then we layered and after here are the veneers finished you can see the opalescence that we cannot have with stains <laughs> and here back the clinic the initial case and here's the case finished a uh, few weeks later so here's the occlusal view with the Oculusial view. So on the first smaller on the left, uh, we decided to be sh more sure than aesthetic. So that's why it's a it's not exactly the same color as the other one because we we use a material which is uh, the the much uh, we didn't layer. We we wanted monolithic, so it's not that nice. But I mean, it's the first smaller. It doesn't matter. On a case like this so this is nine months later later sorry before after and the veneers after the the, the, the work of Gilles with bonding we don't see anything it's really great so thank you Gilles for all those pictures so here is the case before after here another case uh, that we studied by um, it's a case of uh, Jean-François Lasserre. We did, uh, so Jean-François Lasserre is in Bordeaux. He's, it's 700 kilometers from the lab. We didn't see the patient also. It's a case of a patient who um, had uh, agenesia of uh, laterals. So uh, we had to transform the, the canine um, as lateral. Those cases are not easy to do. Um, so here is the, the case. So we put it on the articulator and 
here um we didn't increase the video we stayed exactly on the same video so here is uh the the, the smile we put the model on the picture because we didn't have a gummy smile it was difficult for us to measure because she her lips was too low so here are the measures and we can see the occlusal view we prefer to study the cases on plaster on the models for the occlusal view than on pictures because the mirrors give us wrong measures <clears throat> so this is very important for the lab so this is the project that <clears throat> This project is for us, it's not for the patient. So this is more for the patient. We can make it better with uh, like the teeth can look really like teeth. It's just a, a design for us actually. So we do the framework with CPC. Here, as you can see, there's the, the ceramic gel. Uh, and we add wax on it and uh, that's the paper that I showed to you that was translated in lots of language. So here's this the key of the wax up that uh, you could see it's not exactly on the right place because uh, but it, there was really no place. We work with dentists that they don't they don't prepare that much <laughs> the, the teeth. So here are the frames. These are only the frames. In the silicate, as you can see here, there's the connection on it. So you can see that it's very, very thin. So here, the the, the layer that starts the the transitions lines, the texture, as you can see on this picture. The texture here is very, very important for us. It's might more important than the color sometimes. So this is the initial case. You can see the the, the picture of the the, 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 the veneers of, of the final smile. Here, here it is. So this case was difficult because um, you know that canines they have much more chroma than laterals so we have to choose the right ingot to press to get the result we want so and most of the time we don't have that much space that's why uh, it, it's not easy to to do those cases but uh, if we worked a lot on on the C decade for those few years and we try to choose the the best one each time for for each case is different. That's why we're gonna you're gonna see us at today. Uh, it's soon. It, it's uh, in three weeks. Uh, we worked a lot on the silicate on the 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 color of uh, the result of thickness of uh, each ingot uh, depends of the support of the just. Um, under the desilicate, so we worked a lot on it, and it's going to be in the book also of Jean-François Lasser. So this is our next challenge. Uh, it's in December, it's in Bruxelles, and uh, there's kind of lots of people that are in the International Aesthetic Masters Congress, so it's great that we're, all, we're going to meet in real. We would like to thank the, the, the clinic part because uh, we grew up all together. They they learn us the clinic clinical part, so we can understand exactly what they need and what we can uh, improve more. So here is Jean Pierre Attal, Gilles Tirlet, and Jean François Lasser. They we thank them because they share enough with us, so we can understand the clinic part. I think that this is, I hope, the future. <laughs> So to dentists asked us how we wanted the picture, so we give course on the VIP. The next one will be will be uh, in Bruxelles in February uh, at B Smile. So uh, if you want to go, it's going to be in French, and uh, it's a course of how to take the pictures and how we realize the virtual study project. 
And for the fourth year, uh, this is the fourth year, we're um, doing, here are the new dates for 2018. It's, it's in Saint-Tropez. Uh, and we, have, we fixed two dates for courses. It's uh, small courses of 14 people, not more, because uh, we realized that uh, we are all dentists or dental technician. Most of the time, most of the time, people come. Uh, um, the teamwork comes, and we think it's much better that to come together. So each one understands what the other one needs. And um, though this uh, is uh, this is uh, a good moment that we share together, and we understand uh, what the other wants and. So it's, it's pretty great, the place is very nice, and we do this because the dentists ask us, and we said, okay, why not sharing this with also our colleagues, the dental technicians, they can come with their dentists, so they will improve their relation, it's much better. So if you want to follow us, there's a website, and you can follow us on Aesthetic Oral page, this is the lab uh, page, there's the VIP page, that shares uh, some events and um, some cases sometimes and some papers if there's a new thing. So you can follow us on Facebook, on Instagram also. So we would like to thank you because uh, this is a very nice um, uh, experience for us. It's our first webinar, so it's uh, it was not that easy to fix everything, but uh, we realized it. We realized it in our lab because we wanted you to uh, see the where the VIP was born. It was born here, <laughs> in the lab in Saint Tropez. So we would like to thank you for your trust and for the time that you spend to listen about the VIP. Um, all the team is very honored to be part of this story and uh, thank you a lot, uh, Joanne and Ruth. So they will all say bye to you. They're here. Bye! <laughs> Goodbye.